Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct, interpret, and even plot a repeated measures ANOVA. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Unlike univariate ANOVA, repeated measure ANOVA allows us to include multiple dependent variables at the same time. And in particular, it's most commonly used when a question or a form of question is repeatedly asked. For instance, if you're asking someone about their enjoyment and you're asking it repeatedly during the course of an experience, that would be appropriate. Or if you're measuring somebody's weight over the course of a series of different parts of an experiment, that would be appropriate as well. In our data set, what we're going to look at is the reaction time for each of the five pages of the survey. So we see here we have five different variables, page 1RT, page 2RT, page 3RT, and so on, all the way down to page 5RT, and each one of those captures how long it took people to complete each of the pages. We'll treat this as a repeated measure, and we'll see if first that differs across time, and second, if it differs differently, depending on some independent variable that we'll include. So to conduct repeated measure ANOVA, we go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. And we get this window right here, which tells us to define our within subject factor. You could have multiple within subject factors, but for this video, I'm going to limit it to just one. And so we're going to name this factor pages, because each of these will denote a page. We also have to define how many levels there are. In this case, I have five different pages, five measures, so five levels. And I have to click add over here. That's actually all I have to do to define our repeated measure ANOVA. I can click define. And now we get somewhat of a familiar window if you've used the general linear model tool before. Except this time we have this additional within subject factor variable. This is where we include the repeated measures. And so I'll do that first. I'll scroll down until I find page 1RT, and I'll move that over. Then I'll look for page 2RT, then for page 3RT, page 4RT, and finally page 5RT. Those are my five reaction times for how long it took people to complete each of the pages. I won't have a between subject factor for now, but let's consider some of our other options. We don't need to change the model. We do want to look at plots because this is a really nice and easy way for us to plot these repeated measures. So this window tells us how we want to define our plot. And right now we only have one factor and one variable. So we're going to put that on our horizontal axis and click add. I'm going to leave the line chart and we could certainly include error bars if we feel like that's worthwhile. And then we'll click continue. Under EM means, I do like to get the marginal means for each of my values because that could be useful in future computations. So I include those and that's really all I need to do. And so then I click OK and I get a, quite a few things for my results. The first is I get these multivariate tests, but we're actually not going to use those. We're going to look at our within subject tests. And in order to do that, we first have to see if we violated our assumptions of sphericity. And in this case, we have. So this is our Mokalis test of sphericity. And what we're looking for is to see if there is a significant result here. And there is. It's well below 0.05, which means we can reject the null hypothesis that sphericity is not violated. Because that's the case, when we look at our within subject effects right down here, what we do is instead of looking at that first row, which sphericity is assumed, we look at the second one, which is our greenhouse geyser corrected result. And in particular, we find that the result is statistically significant because we have our p-value well below 0.05. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we see these are the set of results. Each of these dots represents the values for each of my five pages in terms of response time. I have the 95% confidence intervals around those estimates, and we see that they're pretty different, which is why we have that significant result. So this is our simple case where we're only looking at a single within subject variable. But often what we want to do is cross that variable with some other independent variable. In particular, what I'll do is I will cross this with a variable called citizen. This is the question of are you a US citizen or not with one coded as no and two coded as yes. I might have a hypothesis that the speed with which people complete this survey is a function of whether they're a native English speaker. And certainly there's a higher chance that someone is not a native English speaker if they're also not a citizen. That's not for sure, but that's the best measure we have here. So to do that, I can go back up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Repeated Measures. This all stays the same, so I just click Define. And now for our between subject factor, I could include this variable citizen. One of the things I want to change actually is under Plots, I'm now going to ask for an additional plot. I'm going to ask for the plot where pages are still on the horizontal axis, but now I'm going to ask it to separate the data out by citizen. So I'll have two different lines in this graph. That'll be a nice way for me to visualize if there is such an interaction. I have to make sure that I click Add first. That'll add that to our set of charts that we're going to display. And then I'll click Continue. 
Under EM means, again, I like to have all of these, so I'm gonna select all the options and move them over here so I have all those means if I need them for later on. I'll click continue and I'll click okay. So what we see, first of all, is again, our sphericity assumption is violated, so we'll always be looking at our greenhouse geyser corrected results. And it turns out that our interaction between pages and citizenship is not statistically significant. And we can actually visualize that if we continue down here. We see that those lines, the blue line and the red line in this case, for all intents and purposes, are overlapping one another. There is no difference in the time taken to complete any of these pages as a function of citizen or non-citizen. Scrolling back up for just one second, I did skip over the fact that here you have your EM means table. These are your estimated marginal means for each of the level of pages and citizenship. And because we now have a between subject factor, we can also just see if there's a main effect of citizenship as in are citizens versus non-citizens overall taking more or less time? And the answer in this case is no. That is not a statistically significant result. We see that right here in this citizen row, which indicates that we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there is an equal amount of time spent by citizens and non-citizens across all of these pooled together. We also have a table up here which looks at different contrasts. So you could look at linear, quadratic, cubic, and fourth order contrasts, which can be quite interesting to look at, but the interpretation is complicated when we're dealing with an interaction. And so I'll leave that to a future video. This is the point of the video where I pause and let you give it a try. And in particular, why don't you keep those same five measures that we have from before in terms of page times, but instead of interacting with citizenship, let's interact it with gender. Now note that gender has three levels, male, female, and other. So we'll see what that looks like. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a try, and I will show you what I get when you return. Okay, hopefully you've gone ahead and done that, so I will as well. If I go back up to Analyze, General Linear Model Repeated Measure, I will keep this the same because I still have five levels of the same within subject factor. I can keep those defined to the same as well, but instead of Citizen, I'm going to swap that out with Gender. Importantly, under plots, I have to create that plot again because gender wasn't there previously. So again, pages goes under horizontal, gender goes under separate lines, and I click add to make sure that that's created. All my other options stay intact. Under EM means, I'm going to add all those back because gender again wasn't there previously. And then I'll click OK to see what our result looks like. So we can see here that, first of all, most of our respondents are male or female, and only a few identify as other. And if we scroll down to our test of within subject effects, we again, looking at the greenhouse geyser corrected results, see that there is a non-significant interaction. Meaning there isn't a difference in the speed with which people complete each of the pages as a function of gender. And we can visualize that nicely by scrolling down to the bottom here. And we see again, those lines more or less overlap. You could also notice that the 95% confidence intervals on other are huge. And that's because we have so few subjects there. So that's it. Repeated measure ANOVA is an incredibly useful tool for looking at multiple measures taken at multiple points in time for the same individuals. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.